You never know where you'll be found. So let's set some limitations now. I found some of your Bible students behind the factory, and I don't think they're studying the Word of God. Yeah, that's bad, right? All right. So during our, for our courtship limits, we're saying where we will not go on dates or where we will go on dates. Where's a good place to go on a date in Singapore? Shopping center, a restaurant. Very safe. McDonald's. Chinatown Point McDonald's. Very good place. A little cheap, but safe. Inside the counseling room on the fifth floor. Very safe, extremely cheap. Inside Brother Willoughby's living room with us sitting there. Very safe, but you're not welcome. No. <laughs> Where else could you go? A shopping center? A library, as long as you don't go behind the books. <laughs> Same problem, okay? I'm saying where there's lots of people. Go where there are people. What is it? Masa Malam, yeah. I say don't go out too much after dark. That was one of my limits. Because it seems like when the sun goes down, so does our morals. In the daylight when you're with somebody, it seems like light is there. And, the, and you're not as likely to get into nonsense in broad daylight when the sun is shining. But if you get alone in a dark place, when it's dark time, it seems like everything goes south. You know, it seems like we just... So that was one of, our, one of the things we said. When Pastor and I was dating, we would not be alone in a car together. We would not go to us. We would not go... And you're going to think this is like really extreme to a hotel. It wasn't that we meant go to a hotel room. We meant even a hotel setting. You know, like sometimes you can go and sit in the lobbies of a hotel. In America, the lobbies in a hotel are very not frequented. Like, like here, maybe you could go and sit in HIC, Hotel Intercontinental, in the lobby where they serve food and you'd be all right. But in America, you could go to a hotel lobby and nobody walk through the hotel lobby and God knows how long and you could end up sitting next to each other and making out. So we put that limit on us. We didn't want to go to something like that. We didn't want to be in the car parking. We only stayed in public places where there was loud, large crowds, and we preferred to do it during the daylight hours. If we were going to go out at nighttime, then we had to be in a very public place, and when the crowd left, so did we. If everyone else goes home, so do we, separately. And... Or we would take a group. We would go in a group with something like that, just for our own safety and protection, okay? How much alone time are you going to give to each other? What is the limit that you put on that? You're balancing other things, probably. You may be balancing a career by that time you're out of school. That's why we don't recommend and do not want you dating while you're still in school or courting in school, because you only have so much time in your school and your church should take up all of your time. You really don't have a lot left for courting somebody, all right? Um, how much phone time are you going to have with this person? Oh, I'm not going to be with you, but I'm going to keep the phone off the hook at any time, and I'm going to have the camera on the computer, and we're just going to sit and stare at, stare at each other for every minute that we're not with each other. Well, it's defeating your purpose, isn't it? You need to have a balance. The key here is balance. So how much time are you going to be on MSN with them? Are you going to, in the middle of the night, MSM them at 3 o'clock in the morning, call each other, let the phone ring once, get on SMN, MSN, and then chit-chat until 6 o'clock in the morning. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. What are you going to do? Oh, I may just leave. Wait a minute, I'm back now. Well, what did you do? Well, I was just in the other room. And how do you feel now? I mean, nonsense. It's stupid. Oh, I have a, I, my tummy's not hurting me. Oh, I hope you're all right. You think you need to go to the hospital? It's 2.30 in the morning. Go to bed. That's what you need to do. You have a stomach ache because you're not asleep. 
And you say, that never happens. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So what are your, your limits on that? What are your touch limits? That should be under your courtship limits. How far will you let your monkey hands go? Touch limits. What are you going to do to develop your conscience? Develop it now before you even start courting. Because otherwise you don't even have a conscience to compromise. You have no conscience. I don't know what I'm going to stop on. I never thought about it. Think about it now. What does God say should be your limits for touch? What did God say when we went down our thing? He wants eye to eye. Actually, there are no touching. I mean, you want to hold a hand? Can you control yourself with holding hands? <laughs> Good for you, son. He's a brave boy. Okay? I, I held Brother Willoughby's hand. But after that, we put a limit. Because we found ourselves having difficulties if we didn't. So we put a limit. We would hold hands. Would we kiss? Yes, we did kiss, but we had to put a limit on what type of kisses. I mean, there's kiss, and then there's kiss, I want to defraud you. I'm not stopping, and I'm just really into this. And I may be stopping with my hands, but my tongue is just going the whole way, man. I am totally gone. So there is a difference. And you may not know that until you start courting somebody. But you have to put a limit. And with that, let's go to our definitions of what the Bible says you can and cannot do. Definition number one, it's in your book. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. These are words that are in the Bible that when we read, on them, read about them, we go, we're not supposed to do that. What is it? And you do it and you don't even know you're doing it. But praise God, you don't know the definition. So shoo, it's all right. Well, we're getting ready to discuss what are the definitions. These are what you use for your dating limits for touch. These are your touch limits, all right? Now, they're in your book. So you don't have to write them down because I know you don't know how to spell them. We just barely know how to pronounce them. If you say this word three times, you're speaking in tongues. Lasciviousness, lasciviousness. So these are really big words. <laughs> okay? So what is it? Because the Bible tells us you cannot do these things we're getting ready to describe, all right? Lasciviousness. Here's the, def here's the explanation, which you still won't know what it is. Pernicious. Wantonness. Oh, yeah, that means not so many wontons in the soup, all right? What does that mean? I don't even know if I'm doing it. Okay, well, let's find out what it is. It is a preoccupation, underline it, preoccupation with bodily or sexual pleasure exhibited by excessive and unrestrained excitement of your physical senses for personal gratification. Okay? So that is meaning that you are so preoccupied with sexual pleasure and you do not restrain yourself and you go excessively, you just don't control it and it's all only for your own personal gratification. The Bible says you are not to do this. This is found in Galatians 5 and 9, 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. We all know what adultery is, right? A married person that is uh, committing a sexual act with somebody who they're not married to. Fornication. Two people who are not married who are committing a sexual act, okay? uncleanliness, lasciviousness, which we just explained right here, preoccupation with bodily or sexual pleasures. Next definition. Concupiscence. 